Folks, how you doing? I have a Minecraft build that I've been working on, both on and off stream, mostly off, and I've been wanting to show an update of it, and I've been waiting until I finalize certain things, and I've been thinking, you know, it's a Minecraft build. You're never really done. There's always more that you want to do, so consider this just sort of a, a snapshot tour of the work in progress that we have, and what's there I think is pretty cool, so I, I, I'm excited to show it off, but anyway, this is what we've got. So, I've got my bed Bedroom here. Uh, this is our little cockatiel that we found in the little bit of exploration that we've done in the jungle. Um, into this hallway here, we've got some cool armor. I think I got this off a skeleton or something. Our workroom and stuff. Our little table to eat. Uh, we have our uh, back room into our attic. We had a little Enderman roommate who lived up here for a really long time and then left. Um, but he left a few like dirt blocks behind to remember him by, so. We miss our little Enderman roommate. And then there's also a basement. Uh, I'll leave that open. There's a basement right over here. Where we've got our little basement cow. And also uh, we're growing some food. We've got our chest storage down here. And I'll show you the outside too. The outside I think looks really good. We've got lanterns and we've got this little like growing bay here. Oh no! I'm missing one of my leaves. We've got, like, little growing beds, we've got some jack-o'-lanterns. Here's our, uh, cows and our chickens and our horse and everything. We've got some sheep over there, our nice big trees. And I really like the way the sides of the houses look. Another Enderman friend there. I like the back, all the windows, and the other side over here. That's basically it! That's our little Minecraft house! You can see our Enderman friend left the dirt in the window there. That's our little Minecraft house! Pretty neat, right? Now you might be thinking one of two things. Yeah, yeah, it's alright, I don't know. And also, uh, okay, clearly there's more going on than just that, so get to it. Good news, you're right on both counts, because there is more going on. This whole thing that you see right here, all of this, it's fake. It's a facade. This isn't my real base. This is all a red herring to distract you from the actual entrance to our real base, which is concealed in this completely innocuous tree. This completely innocuous, gigantic tree that if you explore, you could climb up into. And, aha, there's a little ladder up here concealing a chest with our diamonds and emeralds. Now, if you perhaps stumbled across this, and wandered up, you might think that this is what this chest and this whole tree is intending to hide, but in actuality, the real secret is in this trap door here. Because if you go down, you find our real base built in the root system of this gigantic tree and lit by the shroom lights here. So we've got a lovely little enchantment room, our library here, We've got a workroom over here where we do all of our smelting. Oh, we got some copper ready to go. We've got our wor uh, work table, our uh, clock to keep track of what time it is outside because we're underground. So, you know, we don't want to go up when it's dark so we can sleep before we leave. Our storage room, which is much better organized than that basement nonsense you saw before, right? Like, it's designed to look like, oh, it's, you know, classic starter Minecraft house, but no. Here, we're actually a little bit more professional. We got things organized. It's like we know what we're doing here. We got a nice, quaint little bedroom. Where we could sleep in our little, like, sleep cubby there. And that's it! Here's our whole secret little, uh, underground root base. Pretty cool, right? No! No! This is all fake! It's a red herring! It's a facade of a base! This isn't a real one either! And you might have noticed, this one uses a little bit of a classic, a classic gag. There is this suspicious painting, right? Alright, let's go on into it and- oh! There seems to be a little bit more to it than that though, because we've got five buttons. Hmm. Hmm. Pressing them just seems to activate some kind of piston, but if you know the exact order to press them in, and press the one and the fifth button, 
and then hustle on over here <laughs> to the workroom. Aha! It has slid open the workbench, revealing a staircase down. Now, if we don't go in immediately, it'll close up again automatically. Meaning if we were over there just randomly pushing buttons, we're not going to find our way in. We have to know what we're doing. So we'll head back over here again, go through our secret painting on the door. I might have actually pressed the buttons too slow there. That would be embarrassing. Oh my god, I've ruined it. Ah, oh, nuts, I ruined it. Ah, oh, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. That's so embarrassing. See, good thing I'm not being, like, chased by a criminal or something. Otherwise, I would have completely failed to get down into my own underground base. We'll see that close right up above us again. This is the, uh... The work shaft to all the wiring that runs that. It's honestly relatively simple. It's mostly just, uh... One button moves a block into the way to complete a circuit, and then the other button hits the circuit. And then the majority of the rest of this is just lengthening that pulse out uh, so that the door is open for longer. I do things like this a lot because I love the aesthetic of buttons, but usually I want them to last for a little bit longer than they do. So a little uh, pulse extender there. If we want to get back up, we've got a button there that opens it up too, so we could go back up that way. But for now, let's go down into our real base. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, this is a nice little antechamber before, lit by a lantern. Some lovely flowers. And we could head down and, oh, look at this! It's our little magical underground area. With appropriate magical underground music. And we've got our little work area here, along with the trash compactor. This is fun. Honestly, I don't know... I don't know why I built such a thing. It just basically dumps out items into a cactus to get rid of it. I, I, I don't honestly know why I built that. But I did, and it's there, and it works, and it's cool, so, you know, whatever. There's our work room. We got a map room over here, which is like a real, actual map in real life. We haven't done a lot of exploration. I need to do more to fill up the map wall. But in the meantime, we've got this ocean here, a little boat. We've got some islands, a tree, the sun up in the sky. Our map room is itself a physical map. Down here we've got our much better organized storage room. You thought it was organized before. Nah, this is real organization. We got everything here all nice and ready to go for us. Lot of stuff, lot of stuff from the mining. Lot of mining, lot of mining. And our more valuable things over here, or well, in one of them anyway. Our storage room, this is our... Oh! Oh, hey, we've got another little Enderman roommate over there. How about that? We've got ourselves our little grow room here. There's a button. There it is. There's a button here I could press that I'm not going to because we'll upset our Enderman friend that will open a, a water uh, sluice at the end there. And all the water will come down and harvest everything for us, putting it into this chest. Very convenient. We've got our mining room here with all of our uh, 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 furnaces and the, like, whetstone or whatever it is. It's new-ish to me. Been a few updates since I played Minecraft. This room is a work in progress, but it'll be for, like, melons and stuff. Here's our bedroom! Oh, I'm so proud of our bedroom, too. Some cabinets, dressers, a little mirror there. We've got our carpet, our bed. We've got a nice little uh, bar in here, along with a sink. Bunch of things on tap. Mm, could I get you anything? Perhaps a drink? Pour a drink? Serve it up here? Oh, enjoy! Yes, we've got we've got all sorts of things. Many, many kegs. In fact, we've got a whole menu above our bar here. Uh, well, so far we're only serving empty bottles and bottles of water, but, you know. Budget cuts, we don't have our liquor license yet. But anyway, this is our base. Pretty cool, right? Eh, it's okay. It's okay. You may have noticed there's another secret here. This one, again, kind of a classic one. Lava. 
Um, there's a number of things you could put behind a wall of lava, including like a uh, mine cart that you could right click on and put yourself through that lava. Um, here in particular, we did a lever. If I could find it, where are you? Lever, where are you? There it is. And that lever closes off the flow of the lava and moves a little walkway for us. Excuse the mess, we've got some exposed redstone here. We come on down into- Oh! Hmm. Well, it looks like it's not going to be that easy this time. Things have gotten a little bit more complex, you know. This was not the root base where we could have something like a hidden door behind a painting. No, no, no. This one, a little bit more complicated and like I would have exposed redstone. Please. Close that back up again. Totally, totally a red herring. It's a red herring within a red herring. In actuality, the way into our next base is in here. It uses a fun little mechanic. So you might know there are like two different levels that you could be on in Minecraft. So you could be standing up or you could crouch on down. Stand, crouch, stand, crouch. But there's a third level you could go into, which is basically like shuffling along on the ground. And there's not a button to put you into that, but there's a few different ways to be forced into that mode. And one of those ways is with a trapdoor. So in addition to being like, you know, that standard like way to get behind a bar, this is also something to push you down into that. And then the whole bar could be used to keep you down low to the ground. And as you crawl underneath it, you could access this secret passage that you can't access any other way. Because you can't get down here otherwise, we'll close it behind us. And in this secret back room behind the bar, aha, uh -huh, we see a bit of a water elevator. Well, let's head on down to our next base. Certainly our real base this time, perhaps. Let's head on out and aha, uh -huh, here we are. So the concept of this evolved a lot over the course of a lot of time. Uh, but this is uh, sort of like a, a twilight time uh, in the middle of a clearing in the forest, surrounded by trees and the darkening sky overhead. Uh, just in the, in the middle of a clearing in the woods here, we came out of this magical, massive tree here. Another clock, because we're now deep underground. It's, oh, it's nighttime now. So we know we'd have to sleep if we want to go back up again. A lovely fountain in the middle here. We've got a spooky Halloween cave. We've got a nice little gingerbread house. And we've also got an upside down sandstone castle. Each of these locations is itself one of its own locations. So I love the little, uh, like, spooky, necromancy, like, dungeon sort of aesthetic I did for the inside of the cave here. Originally, it was just going to be a dark mouth, and then I realized, like, oh, you know, I could use some, like, darkness and some black wool and make it a, a path that you could go in through. And what's cool is in the latest update of Minecraft, monsters spawn... Uh, now at light level zero, and that's it. So light level one, they don't spawn anymore. So I made sure that even though it's really dark, it's light enough that no creatures spawn in this area. And the black wool helps it make it look even darker. But if you come around and- Oh! Well, this is weird. This seems to be the inside of the gingerbread house. Well, there must be some kind of magic portal that took us from the skull cave to the inside of the gingerbread house. I, I, I thought this would be a fun concept. I don't know why, but the insides of all of the places are swapped around. Um, although I am serious, the, in, the, the necromantic dungeon inside is my favorite one, but I'll, I'll show you that in a bit. But first, we got the inside of the gingerbread house. We got some campfires under these stoves, so we get these constantly going smoke particle effects. Little kitchen area. We're baking so much meat and some cake and stuff. It's so delicious. It's so delicious. Little place to sit here and enjoy things as well. I learned item frames can be laid flat horizontally too, so I thought they looked good as like trays or plates or something. Um, and these are campfires with just meat around them too that I used as sort of storage shelves. I love it! 
Alright, well, I mean, if the inside of the gingerbread house is there, that must mean something else is in the inside of the gingerbread house. Let's see what that's all about. Got some candles in the window, in our chocolatey window. Oh, very chocolatey interior, but, oh! Oh, we're on the inside of the upside-down sand castle, of course. I should have guessed. Oh, well, that is a lovely fireplace. I don't know how it happens to burn upside down like that. Oh, hang in there. Yeah, mm, typical, basic. Ah, there's the door. Uh, live, laugh, love. Yes, of course. Well, perhaps we could get down into the basement of the house. Well, okay, this upside down sand castle is obviously not going to do anything for us. Nice paintings. I guess we should get out of here. Well, if the necromancy room isn't in there, it, it must be in the upside down castle, right? But how are we going to get up in there? The, the entryway is much too high and I can't fly. Hmm. Well, good thing we have a little built-in entrance hidden in these towers here. Either tower could do it. But we've got a little button you could hit here that goes whoop. A little boost up so you could get up to that ladder. And then we could get into... Uh-oh. Things are starting to look dark and spooky now. Aha! And indeed, here is the necromantic interior. A spooky little altar with glowing single candles. Perhaps animated armor for those uh, d and fans out there. This is our mimic growing room for other d and fans out there. But it's our nether wart room for people who uh, play Minecraft. Spooky little casket down below under this glass floor. We've got some other coffins in here, along with three mysterious tomes. Oh, with demon summoning instructions. How to summon Belial. How to summon Mammon for money and power. Ugh, I don't know if we want to know anything about all of that. Well, those are the interiors. But this is cool, right? This is our base! Our very complicated base! But this isn't it either! There's more to it than this! This is all just a red herring! In fact, this time, there is more than one red herring about the way to get to the next base. Because, yes, there is still yet another base within this base. Within a base. Within a base. Within a base. And what it's all about is, uh... Red herrings. So six red herrings this time. The first red herring, it's a bit of a half of a red herring, and that's the fountain. The fountain out here, that's nothing. Oh god. This is nothing. Fountain, very, very tempting, but the fountain, in fact, contains no secrets. No secrets in the fountain. I don't know if you could count that as a red herring, but we'll count it as a red herring. Instead, each of the four locations have their own red herring. Here, you might notice there is a button hidden down there that when pressed, aha, opens a secret door here. But, oh, wouldn't it be nice if this were the secret location? But sadly, you're barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Anyway, we should use this button to leaf. Nice try, though. So, that is not the way to the next base. But perhaps the next way is hidden within our gingerbread house here. Did you happen to notice anything suspicious inside of it? Well, you may have, if you were looking at that particularly delectable cookie in the corner. What happens if we spin that cookie upside down? Aha! A secret passage. Hmm. This could have been a sweet spot for a hidden base. But did you wooly think I would put it here? <laughs> no. This is just additional storage for uh, another oven that we have cooking some more cakes, uh, some more cookies, some more cake. An egg, you know, for when you need an egg. 
there's that as well. Close that up again. So that's not correct either. Hmm, where else could it be? Perhaps this gingerbread house. Well, here, there is actually nothing inside the house, but right here, hidden under the snow, aha! Fun fact, scaffolding can be completely hidden by snow. It doesn't work with carpet, unfortunately, but you can cover it up with a layer of snow, and then you can still go down through it anyway. So it makes a lovely hidden location. But, uh, oh, there's no way I'd hide something here. You thaw the wrong entrance. You had an ice idea that didn't work out. This was not the white place to look. Well, it was a good try, though. We've got a little igloo filled with lovely little chocolate bits all around and a chocolate center. But alas, another red herring. Well, then the proper base has got to be in the dungeon, right? And I mentioned the dungeon was my favorite, so it does completely make sense that that's the place I would favor as the secret entrance. You might think that it's behind this suit of animated armor. Nope. Nope. Just another trick. Just something to make you think that might be where it is. But really, it's behind these tomes here. If you turn to pages 7, 11, and 12. It will open a secret passage, but 7, 11, and 12, you might think. What arbitrary pages are they? Because if you turn to page 7, you see step 6. And if you turn to page 11, you see step 6. And if you turn to page 12, you see step 6! <gasps> and on dialing in, the number of the beast himself. A passageway opens. And... Oh. Spooky as it may be, it's another small chamber. Right. I totally undeaderstand getting to the bottom of this. But it wouldn't zombie here. So, go stoway. <laughs> uh, I'm a delight. But, hmm, if none of the locations contain the right route, and I already told you the fountain was a red herring, what's left? Well, what's left is the final red herring. The answer that, in fact, all four of these hidden locations are required to unlock the true hidden location, and you might discover that hidden in the very words in this room. Right. I totally undeaderstand. Right. I. Right. I. Right eye! If we look at the right eye, hidden behind it is a button. Pressing that activates one of four latches that open the next door. There is also a deadbolt that gets locked unless all of these pages are turned back to page one, which, in addition to closing the door again, also, you know, resets this room. So there's this built-in need to clean up behind yourself before you could actually move on to the next room, which is always nice. It means the next time we come through here, everything is back to normal, as it should be. Perfect. Let's head back to this one. Press that button. Where'd you go? Where's that button? There it is. Head on down here. Do you see anything suspicious? There's very little in this room, right? Other than this button that lets you leaf. But that button is the secret. Because although it does open the door, if you press it a second time, it sends a special pulse that opens another latch. Gotta press it while the door is open, and that will unlock the next latch. I was just about to say, oh, so ingenious, but I built it myself, so that's a little bit self-aggrandizing to, to pat myself on the back like that. So I won't. Next step is also down here as well. 
If you lift up this trap door, underneath this bit of carpet here is a redstone ore that when you step on will activate and that sends a pulse opening another latch. And just like the previous deadbolt on the tomes, this must be rotated back to the upward position once again in order to open the lock. And last but not least, and I am really hoping it opens up, because if it ends up not being open, I already messed up the, the root opening once. It would be humiliating to mess this up too. So there are multiple buttons in here. You may have guessed that pushing one of the buttons is the correct answer, and it's this one. Why? Because this is the funniest of the four puns to me. You thaw the wrong entrance. It's just... It's, okay, anyway. And with that button pressed, it should open the pathway. Yes! A staircase has revealed itself to us. Hang in there, indeed. We could head on down. And going over that little uh, pressure plate there not only closes the door behind us, but also uh, closes the staircase and resets all the latches. So if we want to come down again, we've got to hit all of those buttons once again. So now everything automatically reset for us. So when we leave, we don't have to, like, worry about locking things behind us. It's pre-locked. Stair maintenance is right behind here. This controls pretty much everything. This all controls the stairs. This is the latch system that I was talking about. These are the four different latches we've got here. From the sweets, from the crypt, from the tree, and from the snow. When each of those buttons get pressed, it moves the block in the way. Once all four are in the way, it completes this circuit. There are also some that get closed off, as I mentioned. This is one of those. So this is only in the way if the cookie is rotated in the correct position. If it's rotated into the incorrect position, this circuit is broken, and it won't actually activate the stairs. Each of these different paths runs you to the location. I'm not going to show all of them. Most of the way they work is probably a little bit straightforward. The crypt one is pretty interesting just because of the way the tomes work. And I, whoops, and I love that about it. And I obviously didn't make this to be particularly easy to maintain. But there is all sorts of fun here. Ah, here we go. This is the route I wanted to take. Aha! There we go. Oh. Almost got it. There we go. So this runs, this is the back of that tome area. All three of the tomes are right here. Here are the comparators that uh, are looking for that correct signal. If it goes more than one page, it activates some lines that will close off that deadbolt. And then if it goes to the correct page, it'll activate another line, which runs all the way back to open uh, this. This is the trap door that leads us down into that punny eye room down there. I'm not really much of a redstone whiz. Most of the things that I do with redstone are just kind of looking at diagrams. It's mostly in the coming up with fun things to do with it, you know? A lot of people are intimidated by redstone and think you've got to really understand how to put together these complicated machines in order to do anything interesting. And yeah, this is a complicated machine, but it's a complicated machine put together for a single purpose, made of a bunch of different pieces working together. So I thought, I want this little piece, I want this little piece, I want this little piece, and then it comes together in a way that looks complicated and makes you think, oh man, there's no way I could ever do that, but, you know, you just take it bit by bit. Every little, every little element of it you tackle one at a time and eventually you've got the whole system. But this is the maintenance shaft we could completely avoid, and I must be honest, there is no next base just 
yet. But this would take us to the next base. I don't know where that would be. Maybe out into the ocean. Maybe into the lava here. Maybe into the sky. I'm trying to figure out where I want that to be for sure. But either way, there is a way to get back up again. And it's pressing this button here, which will take us back into this igloo room. You might recognize... So there was actually more hidden here than meets the eye, but nothing actually opens that up from this side. And then if we want to go back, we could be back to right here. And this is how, ultimately, we would get back to the surface if we wanted to. So, yes, you know, after a day of adventuring, it does take a little while to get back to the bed to sleep. After storing all my goods, it does take a little while to get back out into everything again. But ultimately, I think it's worth it. We got a snazzy little setup here. So that's our base in progress. Folks, I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see us uh, build things like this or play other things, we are live on Twitch. Come check us out at twitch.tv slash fruitbats. And I'll see you again in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks for checking out my Minecraft base. Within a base. Within a base. Within a base. <laughs>